My name is Alexander Chow, and this is a story about how Latin American immigrants and U.S. citizens in the 20th century were able to overcome their rivalries and embrace their differences, creating a community that advocates for each other. Between the 1900 and 1930, about one and a half million Im Mexican immigrants nor uh, migrated northward to the United States. While most of them traveled to the Southwest to work agricultural labor jobs, many Mexicans also immigrated to cosmopolitan cities, including San Francisco and New York City. San Francisco was originally part of Mexico, but was ceded to the U.S. after they lost the U.S.-Mexican War in 1848. The city already had a significant Mexican population and became the most diverse city in the U.S. when the gold rush exploded, creating a vibrant, diverse uh, Latin American population and establishing embassies for every single Latin American country by 1857. So similarly, in New York City, the Puerto Rican population grew from 12,000 to 100,000 during the 1920s, forming a visible, com visible community and internal support networks among of, amongst other European and Latin American populations. Latin American immigrants lived amongst each other in ethnic clusters and neighborhoods called barrios, where they can bring the energy and the same cultural continuity patterns from back home. Whether it is helping maintain a language or custom or sharing news from home, these spaces integrated uh, uh, helped to integrate migrants into the economic and social life in the U.S. This then begs the question, in these multicultural spaces, how did Latin American populations and the spaces they created allow people to come together, form inclusive communities, and advocate for each other despite their differences? So in 1913, a Colombian immigrant founded what would become the widely popular colonial newspaper of record, La Prensa. In the following decades, the newspaper started running on a daily basis and reported an over an average daily readership of 15,000. The newspaper covered headline news from all across Latin America and local news, making a show of running a front page interview with a working class leader or providing page one coverage of dock, order, of dock workers strike. This is significant because it shows the active engagement of immigrants in staying informed about their local communities and what is happening back at home. Staying informed is the first critical step in forming meaningful bonds with the local community and advocating for each other during challenges, challenging times. That being said, most Latin American immigrants were illiterate, so the direct impact of new newspapers were limited. Organizations like the League of United Latin American Citizens, LULAC, founded in 1929, which is the oldest civil rights organization for Latin American people in the U.S., uh, arguably played a greater role in advocating and promoting each other's welfare. While most of its initial members were in the middle class, Latin Americans uh, were middle class Latin American citizens. In many ways, LULAC served as a mutual aid society by representing the community before authorities, educating the youth, and providing a supportive network. What is, was different is that they tried to unite all Hispanics without national distinction. Within their 25-point constitution, points 12 to 14 encouraged its members to also ed exercise their political right to vote and to take action to better the overall community as opposed to personal benefit alone. Fast forward to the latter half of the 20th century, we can see this budding advocacy and support culture flourish in different Latin American communities. At the University of California, Riverside, UCR, the, Luis, the Nuestra Cosa, a bilingual newspaper in English and Spanish, was founded in 1972 and served as a vital resource for local Chicana X community. The publication featured news coverage of Chicana X issues on local and national levels, original art, uh, poetry, as well as reflecting the community's experiences and struggles. The special edition for the November 1975 provides an extensive coverage of the United States uh, of the United Farm Workers, farm ballots, and opinion poll successes while highlighting the impact of its nationwide boycott, encouraging millions of people to stop buying California grapes, lettuce, and gallo wine to negotiate fair worker wages and humane working environments for many Latin, Latin American workers. Additionally, the publication delves into everyday challenges faced by the Chicana ex-youth, including strict immigration laws and racial profiling depicted through poetry, short stories, and political cartoons. The significance of Nuestra Nuestra Costa lies in its role carrying forth and advancing the legacy of advocacy, inspiring action within the Chicana X community. It's, it documents injustices endured and boldly asserts their sense of belonging, empowering individuals to challenge and reclaim misrepresented narratives in mainstream media. So in essence, even amidst 
a culture of racism, Latin American immigrants and the U.S. citizens, uh, especially those living within cities, right, were able to overcome their rivalries and embrace their differences, creating a community that advocates for each other. As much as they were exploited for their cheap labor and abused for their race, they grew to become active agents who refused to be simply acted upon, projecting their undermined voices to, to demand right, the rights and treatments they deserve. Thank you.